What's up guys, Workshot here, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to play the MiG-21 PFM and why it isn't as horrible as a lot of other YouTubers and a lot of other players in War Thunder have been saying. Now, it definitely isn't the best aircraft at this BR, and it should be buffed a little bit in some areas, but I'll get into that in the video anyway. Before we do get into the video, you guys should subscribe and hit that bell notification button, and comment down below what you guys thought of this video and how this video helped or how it could have helped more if I covered other things. Anyway, let's just get right into it. So first I'm going to go over the strong and weak points of the MiG-21 PFM, and then I'm going to go into a few games and show you guys tactics that you should use and tactics that you shouldn't use and why they uh, hurt you. And I see a lot of people doing a lot of stuff that you shouldn't do with the MiG. Um, I'm going to start off by saying don't play the MiG-21 PFM like a MiG-21. It's not really that good of a um, MiG-21. You don't really want to use it to um, brawl with a lot of other jets uh, like F4 Phantoms and other stuff like that at the uh, top tier. You can't compete especially if you're just gonna brawl with them. What you want to do is you want to play it very similar to an F-104. What I mean by that is you want to climb and try to not make many turns. Now why you don't want to make turns is because you have this giant delta wing and when you do make turns you can make them very sharply but the problem is you waste a lot of energy. So don't make turns trying to hold on to one target or trying to kill one target. If you miss, if you miss uh, shots just bounce off of it, keep going and make another um, turn on it. Just keep going, climb and then drop back on it again. Don't just try to turn fight it. You're going to lose your speed very quickly because these giant delta wings work like air brakes when you're turning because you have so much surface area heading into the wind that it'll just kind of slow you down. You'll get so much drag that you'll lose basically all of your energy um, in a few turns. Now the good thing about this is you get to choose whether you want to turn and waste your energy or whether you don't. With the 10.0 F-104 you don't really get that choice. You just can't turn with this. At least you can dodge missiles very effectively. Um, you can kind of do Cobra maneuvers or um, this thing. I'll get into this uh, later. I'm, I want to call it like a circular Cobra maneuver. It's not necessarily a Cobra, but it's very similar in the uh, rhetoric of a Cobra maneuver, which is just to slow your plane down to have the other person overshoot you. So you can either get away or line up a shot on them. And that is why I say the MiG-21 is a good jet. The problem is also, the jet is kind of weak compared to uh, other MiG-21s. Now I do see a lot of people comparing this MiG-21 to the uh, SMT, and I'm going to show you right now why that's wrong. It's a 10.7. You, you can't compare them, because they will get into some matches, but from what I've seen, you will not be getting into top tier matches very often. You'll be getting into, um, I'd say 9.0 to 10.0 matches, or 8.0 to 10.0 matches actually. Um, yeah, you won't be going against top tier jets that often. Uh, but when you do, you're not that great. You just have to play conservatively. I'll get into that later, but yeah. Don't compare it to the SMT, compare it more to the F-13 or maybe the Suit 7 and I'm going to do that right now. So you can see right here that this jet has 5010 kilograms of thrust which gives it um, almost relatively the same amount of acceleration um, as the MiG-21 PFM which is not good <laughs> at all. You can't recover your speed very easily, you can't recover your energy easily. What you have to do is, like I said before, don't make sharp turns if you do not need to. If you miss your shots, just keep going. Don't try to make a recovery shot. Get out and come back when you have more energy. Now, if we compare it to the Su-7, which generally you also don't see very often because people, just, from what I've seen, don't play it, um, you definitely have a worse engine. Although I believe the Su-7 can't turn as well as the MiG-21 either, so it's kind of unfair in that aspect. This is uh, more of a turn fighter. Well, it's more of, it has the ability to be a turn fighter. Um, you get what I mean. It can turn if you need to. Um, now let's get into the gun pods here. I've seen a lot of people saying that it's really awkward 
um, the way that you shoot these and these guns aren't good. That is true. You have to tap fire with these because the ammo runs out very quick. You only have 200 shots and it shoots at 3400 rounds a minute. So those are going to go very quickly. What you want to do is only use these when you know you can hit a shot. Line up right behind a person and just take your shots. Or you can do a long burst when you're intersecting somebody. That can work too, but you need to know um, what you're kind of doing with them because they are generally very low velocity compared to uh, other cannons on other um, like Russian aircraft and basically other aircraft at this rank in general. And the last thing that I see people complaining about are the R3Ss. Now it only gets two R3Ss, these air-to-air -air missiles, and what they are is they are essentially a copy and paste, um, a clone of the American AIM-9Bs, and you can see that their statistics are very close and their gameplay is very close. Um, if we go here you can see it has uh, 9 kilometers launch range, which isn't horrible. Um, maximum speed 1.7 Mach, that's what it will get you. It won't be able to catch up to a target very quickly. Um, and it's 10G maximum overload means you can only really shoot it at targets going in a straight line and if they turn you won't be able to really hit them. So what you need to do, um, well what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to show you the stats of the AIM-9B just in case you have played with the AIM-9Bs you'll see that their stats are very um, similar 1.7 Mach max speed launch range 10 kilometers it's very slightly worse than the AIM-9B but in most aspects are the same so if you know how to play with an AIM-9B just play as you would with an AIM-9B but I will get into teaching you guys how to play with these missiles later on in the video so I'm going to go into two games with this MiG-21. I'm going to go into the first game um, playing like a normal player, making a whole bunch of mistakes and I'm going to be correcting them, showing you guys what not to do. And then in the second game I will be showing you guys what to do, how to correctly play the MiG-21, uh, at least in my experience, what works. And yeah, so let's just get right into it. So in this first game I'm going to be avoiding one mistake and that's it. Put your fuel at 20 minutes so your afterburner does not just eat up half of your fuel before you actually get into any engagement. Um, if you only have 10 minutes worth of fuel, you'll barely able, barely be able to even get back to um, the airbase in time to refuel, so just don't do it. Anyway, I'm going to take off here and what you want to do, um, well what you don't want to do is not gain altitude. And I see a lot of people not doing that, so I'm going to do that. Alright, so we are around, I want to say about 4 kilometers away from the base, and we can already see right here, we have somebody right here, right there, right there, right there, all not climbing. Um, that's obviously bad. If you don't have stored energy in the form of altitude, you won't be able to drop on people, and people will be able to drop on you, so it's not definitely not good. Alright, we have an F4 right here, so what we're going to do is we're just going to go in for the kill, which you should not do. Turn the locker on. Okay, he's dead. Thankfully, we did not die there. Now we have a Mirage coming up. Alright, I missed my shots, so I'm just going to go for the Slanson right here. There we go, we got that kill stolen, and we somehow only shot 50 rounds. I would have thought we should shot more. I can't speak right now. Let's turn the locker back on. We have this F4 coming in. Alright, missed our shots there. As you can see, not gaining altitude is not a great thing to do. I lost control, so I can't launch my missile. I don't even know if that thing that I launched at. Okay, there we go. Launch in flares. And we're dead. Basically, we have no controls and we can't really do anything. Uh, maybe we can get a missile off at this F4. Nope. So, yeah, that's why you want to climb up to altitude. Somebody just dropped on me there and I was not playing conservatively at all. Um, so, yeah, that is definitely what not to do and what I see a lot of people doing. Alright, now that we have 20 minutes worth of fuel in the jet, I'm going to be playing kind of like an F-104 and being extremely conservative because this jet 
although it is not that greatly competitive, it still can be a very good jet. So what you want to do here on the takeoff is just kind of get in the air first, but before you do a full rotation, um, just kind of wait. Wait until you get to about 600 kilometers an hour. Um, 600 or 700 kilometers an hour, actually. So yeah, I'm gonna wait until I get to 700 here. And now I'm gonna rotate slightly because if you do turn too fast, your delta wings will work like air brakes and you wanna rotate until you're at about 30 degrees pitch and just wait until you get enough altitude. Um, you can go to whatever altitude you want. I just generally like to go around six, five to 6,000 meters. Um, is good. Sometimes I go up to seven. It just depends who I'm going against. All right, now that we are high enough to where we can't really be shot down that easily, I'm gonna wait until I get back up to about 600 kilometers an hour, and then I'm just gonna shut off the afterburner. Um, what that'll do is it will conserve fuel, and I won't really need to get very fast while I'm at this altitude, because I will be gaining most of my speed when I do go into a dogfight from dropping. Now we do have an A7D. Now this is a good thing to show you. That is when you want to turn. Now that we weren't going very fast, we didn't really lose much energy anyway off of that turn. So we are fine. That guy couldn't get an accurate shot on us. And we can just keep going. Alright, we have a missile. I'm not sure if it's going. No, it's not coming towards me. Alright. I was going to show you how to dodge a missile, but now I'm going to show you a good setup for an R3S. Right here we have this F3H. Um, just kind of going in a straight line. I'm kind of worried that one of those Harriers will try to shoot me down. But what we want to do is just kind of go right behind it. And okay, he's turning now, that's bad. You can't really shoot at anything that's turning with these missiles. You just kind of have to play patiently and wait um, to get behind somebody. Now I'm gonna try to use my guns right here. I'm not that great with them though. All right, that's very far behind. All right, I'm just gonna skip it because I am starting to go unconscious. I'm gonna watch behind me and just kind of hope nobody's coming there. All right, we're good. And we can just keep going. All right, we have an F-104 or F-100. All right, missile. Just do that and it will dodge. And now I'm gonna try to go down to get more speed. All right. Now I just wanna kind of dodge the shots here. Now what I'm doing is I have A and D on my roll, um, and W and S on my pitch, and I use those, um, I just hold down W and D or W and A, and it will kind of do that barrel roll thing for me. So I'm going to try to use my missiles on this F-100 and hope it'll work. There's something shooting behind me. He doesn't seem very accurate. Hey, yeah, no, that guy knows what he's doing. I'm gonna go in for a gun kill here. Um, as you can see, the R3Ss aren't very good, like I said before. Um, but if you do see like a bomber, like a B-57, or just something going in a straight line, you will be able to shoot it down. So I do have more speed than this F-100. All right, he's trying to turn right now. All right. That's bad. I'm just going to keep going. So as you can see, you would have to play very conservatively. Now, I might go back to the base and reload. Alright. Another missile. There we go. We're good. We did lose control, though. So I'm just going to go back to the base and reload. Um, at least we're not dead yet. I hear another missile, and we're dead. So I couldn't really do much there. Um, the R3Ss wouldn't allow me to really do anything. And I was going too fast to turn very well. Um, so yeah, what I should have done is what I said before, just climbed back up and not engaged the F100. Um, I think the second time, I should have just pulled off and let him keep going. But I got kind of cocky there and tried to get a gun kill, so. Alright, so I'm playing arcade mode here just to prove a point. Now the MiG-21's effective um, BR in arcade is 9.7. And what I mean by that is that is what it is ranked at um, with matchmaking. 
and that is what I think it should be at. It should be at 9.7 because it just should be able to get into those lower tier matches and it shouldn't have such a vulnerability to um, planes like the F4 or Mirage or anything like that at the top tier. Now that is because well you can see that with the effective BR of 9.7 you do much better because um, you're not facing more difficult opponents than you really have to and you are able to survive longer and not get as many kills so yeah it should be a 9.7 it should be buffed a little bit but other than that it's playable so yeah other than that i don't really have anything else to say about it thank you guys for watching and don't forget to comment down below what you guys thought on the video and yeah that's about it